Ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Grace Defined. Today's message is on overcoming fear. Now, this is a very, very personal topic for me because I've recently had my own battle with fear and I wanted to make this video to not only give my testimony but to also offer advice on how you can overcome fear in your own life. While I was studying for this message, God revealed to me a lot of things, not only for my own situation, but he also showed me things that might help other people who may be experiencing the same thing I was experiencing or who may have something different but still fear in other areas of their life. Now a little bit about my story, my friend passed away on May 3rd, 2015. This was a very difficult time for me because I've never had anyone close to me to pass away other than elderly members of my family. It is very normal to grieve. My struggle came when my grief turned into fear. Now I was experiencing fear in many different ways. I was afraid to be alone. I was afraid for anyone close to me to leave my presence because I was afraid something would happen to them when they left me. I was afraid of um, things happening to myself, things happening to people I cared about, just the fear of death and something something or someone harming someone that I cared about was tormenting me. I remember one night at school I experienced anxiety attack and I really just wanted to get up and run out of the room. It was really bad and I remember leaving school that night, driving home, crying out to God, literally in tears because I was experiencing things I didn't understand. I was explaining to him the things that I felt and um, the things that I also knew in his word that applied to me. He, in this moment, began to speak to me and he began to speak to me through myself. So I was in the car that night preaching a sermon on fear to myself. This was the first well, I'll say the first step in me overcoming this fear that I had. Even after that, I had to seek counsel from family and friends. Um, I would just call up people who cared about me and I would just ask them to pray for me. And this was very difficult for me because I've never had to do this before. I'm always the one who has all the answers. I'm always the one praying for someone else and speaking life into someone else. But for once, I really needed someone to cover me and to speak life into me at my weakest moment, at one of my weakest moments in my life. God revealed to me a lot about fear during this time. He showed me that fear is actually the opposite of faith. When I'm operating in fear, then I'm, I'm not operating in faith. God says that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So when I'm operating in fear, that means that I'm not pleasing God. So it tells me I need to snap out of it really quickly if I want to get my life back on track to the will that God has for it in that moment. And fear is not the will of God. So I want to just look at the encounter between Jesus and his disciples in Matthew 14. This is a story about when Jesus sent his disciples across the lake while he went to the hills and prayed. While they were on the boat, the waters became troubled. During this time, they see Jesus walking toward them on the water. They became very afraid. They were not only afraid because the waters were troubled, but they were afraid because Jesus was literally walking on water. They were like, wait, is Jesus a ghost? Like, what is going on? And Jesus said something really important to them. He said, have courage, don't be afraid. I am here with you. And because of this, Peter felt confident enough to walk on the water toward Jesus. But because the waters became troubled again, because the storm became stronger, he became afraid again and he fell. As Jesus is helping Peter up, he says to him, you have so little faith, why did you doubt me? We should not fear because Christ is with us. God lives within us. We are never alone. He says, why did you doubt me? He said, why do you have so little faith? Why did you doubt me? Doubt is fear. And sometimes in our walk with Christ and just in life, we don't see doubt as fear. We see fear as, you know, being afraid that something's gonna, someone is gonna harm us. We see fear as being afraid of heights or being afraid of bugs or being afraid of death, but we don't see just doubt itself as fear. But doubt is just not trusting God, meaning fear is when we don't trust God. Now this must have been a major slap in Jesus' face. He must have felt very hurt because he was right there with him and he was still afraid. Do we not trust God or is it that we don't trust the love that God has for us? 1 John 4, 16 through 18 tells us that we can put our trust in God's love. Why? Because perfect love casts out all fear. Not some fear, it casts out all fear. 
not only is God with us, but he also loves us so much to protect us and to make sure nothing can ever come against us or harm us in any way, shape, or form. God loves us. And his word is filled with so many promises that he's made to us. And because he's sovereign and he cannot lie, we can be confident that he'll always make good on these promises. Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 20, that he will be with us always, even until the end of the earth. Deuteronomy 36, 6 tells us not to be afraid. Not only does God go with us in battle, but he says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13, 6 tells us that the Lord is at help. So we shouldn't be afraid of anything that mere men can do to us. Romans 8.31 promises us that because God is for us, there is no one who could ever stand against us. Then God promises us in Isaiah 54.17 that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. Look, I don't possibly have the time to go over everything that God promises us in his word. But I do urge you to search these scriptures and understand these promises for yourself. I'm here to tell you that God is with you. He loves you. You can trust in his love and you can rest in his promises. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Your faith is your weapon. We are in a battle. The devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't let him steal your faith. I love you. God loves you. Have a blessed day.